we are going to divide their data such that the number of observations that end up being classified into each category is equal. This is an appropriate method for choropleth mapping, which is when we are creating color-coded maps of, of regions in a GIS. But it does have some cons. So the categorical breakpoints are not necessarily nice and round numbers. The widths can be very uneven. So while each, inter while each category will have an equal number of observations, we might find that some of those categories have very narrow intervals, and some could be very large. Uh, we might have also some um, artificial breakpoints. So for example, if we had a lot of numbers in the low value, if we had a lot of observations that had the value, that had the same value, we might actually find that the appropriate place to put a breakpoint is right in the middle of those large list of low values. So in fact, we're often with quantile breaks, if that's the case, going to have to fudge where we place the breakpoint now and again. Also with quantile breaks, because we are, and this is along the same lines, we might find that we are artificially showing differences where no differences actually exist. Let me actually take a second to illustrate what I mean by these, by these last two points. So imagine our data set consisted of a lot of zeros like this, zero, 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 zero. And then some other values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and we'll do fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so we have fifteen uh, values here, and here we're going to divide the data up such that each category has an equal number of observations, and let's do it so that we divide our our data set into three equal groups. So because we have 15 values, each group is going to have, uh, because we have 15 observations, each group is going to have five observations in it. So the first group is going to be here, one, two, three, four, five. The second group is going to be here, one, two, three, four, five. Let's assume that was a zero. It doesn't matter, but it'll demonstrate the point better. And here's going to be the third group. So we have one, two, and three categories. Now, if we were to color these as, say, white, yellow, and blue, and then make a map of these data values, we're going to artificially um, differentiate between these zeros in the white category and these zeros in the yellow category. And we're going to you know, demonstrate or, or communicate that there's some difference here, where, in fact, there is no real difference at all. That's just something you want to watch out for when you are classifying data. You always want to double check and make sure that the classification isn't violating any of these warnings that I've been giving you. So in this case, we've got the same list of numbers. And let me just count. I believe there are 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, And I've used the word quartile. Generally speaking, the way that we are, this method that we are describing is called quantile breaks. Quantile breaks, Q-U-A-N. Now, when we are talking about quartile breaks, that specifically means we are going to use four categories. If I had told you we are doing tertile breaks, that would have meant three categories, or, uh, or quintile breaks, that means five categories. So in this case, let's d uh, categorize this data using quartile breaks. There are 20 category. There are 20 observations, and we want to divide this up into four equal parts. So the number of categories k is going to equal 20 over 4. So we're going to have five observations in each in each uh, category. So if our data is sorted, we can go ahead and just uh, categorize this right away. If your data aren't sorted, the first thing that you want to do is list your data from low to high. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And here are our four categories.